What is going on, YouTube Nation and fantasy football owners out there? This is it. We are now getting into the final weeks of the season. For many of you, this is the final week of the regular season. Some of you are just starting your playoffs. It is the Week 14 Preview Edition of the FFSR, the Fantasy Football Stock Report for your team, your league, your game. This is your home. You know where it's at. Uh, where we break down the matchups for the week, um, the players, who's going to be hot for your team, who's not. Um, for me, this is a really critical week, and for my co-owners, uh, for our team, um, we lost a tough one last week, so now basically it all boils down to this week for us. As I mentioned in the open last week, uh, didn't want to think about that, but it happened. Our players really all had a tough week. Our Cowboys didn't show. They bounced back last night. There's night football. They bounced back in a big way, so that was huge. As I, as I mentioned on the channel, I really liked the, the Dallas and, and players to bounce back, and they did, so that was huge. Um... <clears throat> Although Cole Beasley, I don't think anybody started him in fantasy, though. He was kind of a surprise with two touchdowns, or Joseph Randall, or Gavin Escobar. Vultures and touchdowns from some guys. But uh, um, so that was that was huge, obviously. So big week for me. If I win, I'm in the playoffs. I'll be the probably the three or the four seed. Um, if we lose, we're likely out unless we get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of help. So um, that's where we stand. Hopefully, again, you guys are in a very similar position. Otherwise, why would you be watching this video? <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, but uh, or again, you're either trying to play, you know, spoiler to somebody or something along those lines. So um, let's just uh, first, as we always do, we take a look at the matchups and really kind of what jumps out at me um, before we go uh, position by position <clears throat> uh, breakdown. According to the matchups or the numbers this week, a lot of these matchups seem really like really one-sided. Uh, not not like not like a sweep of, of the numbers one-sided, but very very much uh, one-sided. Um, uh, for last night, the numbers heavily favored Dallas over Chicago, and that's what happened. Dallas completely uh, dominated. Um, you know, Romo had three touchdown passes. Um, Bryant was held without a touchdown for the second straight week, which is a bit of a concern, but he still. Tony Romo's top option. You can't really uh, discredit him. DeMarco Murray had another big game. Um, you know, so that was that was obviously huge. Um, and Chicago just kind of got away from the run. And I, and I put it on Twitter, and I will say it here. I don't have to bring out Mob Guy because my Matt Forte rant was justified. He was shut down last week by Detroit. He didn't even come close to 16 points. He got five. Five. I don't know what he had last night either. But I bet you it wasn't very high either because, according to what they said on like first take, he only got, what, 15 carries? Yeah. Complete disappointing. Again, the Bears are just completely disappointing right now. And they were hit by the injury bug as well last night. Uh, Brandon Marshall um, suffered a rib injury, had to be taken to the hospital. He did tweet out, though, that he was that he was good and he was okay, so good for that. Um and Martellus Bennett, the tight end, was battling to an ankle issue, so something to monitor uh, as you're heading into your, your playoff week. So Chicago just really a mess right now. But Dallas was nice to see them bounce back in a big way after the tough week last week. Uh, looking ahead to the Sunday games, again, a lot of the, these matchups seem pretty one-sided. The numbers really like Pittsburgh uh, to beat Cincinnati this week. Um, you know, they're... They're, they're better in passing offense, passing defense, and the run. Um, since Cincinnati is not good against the run, 25th against the run, so it should be a great week for Le'Veon Bell. Um, and it should be a not-so-good week again for Andy Dalton. Again, can you really trust Andy Dalton right now? I don't think you can, even at home. I don't, I don't see it. Um, and it should be a good week for, uh, for Big Ben as well. Um... The numbers heavily favor Washington over St. Louis, although the big debate is going to be how, you know, how well is Colt McCoy going to do? It looks like it's shown that he's, you know, he's proven he can win with this offense, and he's shown that before. Um, and he's got an opportunity here. St. Louis, D, not exactly that strong, although obviously they had a great performance last week they were playing Oakland, but again, it's Oakland, so you can't really buy too much stock into that. Um, but passing numbers are strong. Washington is 10th. Uh, in passing offense, they're 15th against the pass, and they're 9th against the run. All those numbers favor 
uh, Washington against a Rams team that really, in terms of their stats, is toward kind of the bottom or the mid pack of the league. So, um, so I wouldn't. So I wouldn't expect much from uh, whoever starts at quarterback, whether it's Austin Davis or Sean Hill. I don't even know at this point. Uh, they switch so much. Um, I wouldn't expect much from Trey Mason at running back. Um, better options there. Uh, obviously, the numbers heavily favor the Giants over Tennessee. Tennessee is toward the bottom of every, mostly every statistical category out there. Should be a good week for Eli. Um, whoever starts at running back, whether it's Rashad Jennings or Andre Williams, should be a good week for them. Um, you're really not starting any Titans at this point. Maybe you get with a Zach Mettenberger as a QB2 or a QB3, but his receivers are banged up. Bishop Sankey is a bust, so you're not starting any Titans. Um Pretty even matchup, though, between Carolina and New Orleans. I think you're going to want to start your skill players in this game, uh, the guys that you, you normally trust, um, you know, guys like Cam Newton, guys like, you know, Kellen Benjamin, Greg Olson uh, for Carolina. You're going to want to start these guys. Maybe you can get away with starting Jonathan Stewart as a RB3 or a flex because D'Angelo Williams might not play due to a uh, broken finger. So uh, you might want you might look at take a look at Jonathan Stewart if you're hurting at running back. Uh, but the Saints, you're starting these guys. You're starting Drew Brees. You're starting probably Mark Ingram is still going to get the bulk of the work. Maybe Pierre Thomas is a flex. Kerry Robinson probably is not going to play. Um, you're starting Kenny Stills. He's going to be a huge option now that Brandon Cooks is done for the year. So you're definitely rolling with Kenny Stills. Marcus Colson has been a disappointment, so maybe you kind of go with him as maybe a wide receiver for what the heck flex if you're, if you're desperate at wide receiver. You're definitely starting Jimmy Graham as a top tight end. So... Um, that should be a very fun offensive shootout in that game. You're probably not starting either DST in that game. Uh, the numbers actually say the Jets are, again, um, the numbers pretty much favor the Jets to um, to beat Minnesota, but I don't think it's going to happen because, again, the Jets are now 2-10. Uh, it's, it's just very tough. Minnesota will probably win that game. The only number really that favors Minnesota is uh, their, their passing defense. They're not starting Geno Smith. I mean, the, the Jets are dead last in the pass. So at this point, you're not starting Geno Smith. So that's that's just out the window. You're probably not starting Teddy Bridgewater either because the Jets are 13th against the pass. So neither quarterback is not a recommended option in that game. Um, I think, I think though, you can probably go with Chris Johnson if you're looking for, a de again, a desperate RB2-3 or a flex because the Vikings are 24th against the run. So if you're hurting at running back, if you're desperate, maybe you can plug him in because um, the Jets' running offense is very strong. Um, the, but I wouldn't rec I can't recommend any Minnesota running backs either because of the fact that, you know, Jarrett McKinnon might not play due to his back issue. That would open the door possibly for Matt Asiata. Maybe Ben Tate will get involved, but it's, it's really risky, so I can't really recommend that. Now, if you're looking for a wide receiver in Minnesota, maybe you look to Charles Johnson, who is now leapfrog Cordero Patterson on the depth chart, and now is taking that number two uh, receiver slot. So maybe you look at him again. I mentioned him last week uh, as a guy that you, maybe is a number three wide receiver. Um, Baltimore-Miami, pretty even matchup here. Um, it should be a good day for Ryan Tannehill. The Ravens are 31st against the pass, so... If you're looking for a good QB2 or maybe even a low QB1 with upside, I think you take a look at, at Ryan Tannehill. Joe Flacco is going to have a tough day, though. The Dolphins are second against the pass, so I don't recommend Flacco as a must-play. You know, more of a you know low two, high three because of the tough matchup. Um, you got to love, though, Baltimore's running matchup in this game, though, with Justin Forsett. Um, Miami is 21st against the run, so great matchup there. It might be tough sledding, though, for the Dolphins backs, Lamar Miller. The Ravens are fourth against the run. So I think you're going to see a lot of Tannehill and his receivers, Mike Wallace, maybe you know the tight end, uh, whether it be Charles Clay or Deion Sims. And I think you're going to see a lot of Justin Forsett for Baltimore. Um, Joe Flacco and his receivers kind of get a notch down this week because of the tough matchup. The numbers heavily favor the Colts over Cleveland, um, and I can't say I blame them again. Colts have the number one passing offense. You're not sitting Andrew Luck. You're not sitting T.Y. Hilton. Uh, even though T.Y. Hilton might have Joe Hayden to worry about, um, it's he's still a top option. You can't. You probably don't have better options to, than to sit T.Y. Hilton. So uh, you're, you're going to go with him. Um, maybe you know. Maybe Reggie Wayne then gets some more looks, or maybe like uh, Kobe Fleener if Dwayne Allen can't go at tight end. Fleener had a big week last week, so. Um, and he's been doing well with, with Alan Hurt, so maybe you can use Kobe Fleener as a strong option. Um, 
and actually the Colts, this is also a great week for, for Boom Heron. Uh, if, if you're an owner like me that has Boom Heron, and Cleveland is 29th against the run, and so uh, that's a great matchup for a run. Maybe you throw in Trent Richardson as a what-the-heck flex, but Heron's going to get the, the bulk of the work and the bulk of the touches, so I think he's a good option. Um, Cleveland is sticking with Brian Hoyer, although the Colts are preparing like they're going to see some of Johnny Menzel. Uh, maybe in a package set or something like that. So Hoyer is still the quarterback. No controversy in Cleveland yet. Um, but, you know, Hoyer, you could probably maybe use him as a QB, too. The Colts are 25th against the pass, so it's not a great match. So it's not, uh, uh, you know, good for the Colts there. It's a great matchup for Hoyer. So you can use him as a QB, too. You're not sitting Josh Gordon, uh, obviously. He is, even though even though him and Hoyer are kind of a little bit off sync, um I think you still need to use him. I'm starting in my league this week, so he's been amazing since I got him back. So you're, you're starting Josh Gordon. Jordan Cameron probably won't likely play again this week. He's still dealing with a concussion issue, but monitor that throughout the week, but he probably won't go. Uh, as for the Cleveland backs, it's a tough matchup, um, but I think you can still safely go with Isaiah Crowell if he plays. He's dealing with a hip issue, but he says he's going to play Sunday. So I think you go with him over Terrence West. Uh, Terrence West definitely has the fumbling issues right now, so not a recommended fantasy play. Detroit obviously is heavily favored over Tampa Bay, and rightfully so. The numbers agree. Um, you're going to see a lot of, again, of Matthew Stafford, of Calvin Johnson. Um, those guys are must plays. Golden Tate is a must play. Um, now the the backs. Now Reggie Bush does it will in all likelihood come back this week, so that might lower the numbers a little bit for Joy Bell. Um, but I think it's still, you know, a, a decent match. Tam Bay is middle of the pack against the run, um, but I think Joyce going to be okay, and, and Bush then will get, maybe get work as a third down back or the, the flex option. So so I'd say Joyce is still a solid RB2. Reggie is more of like an RB3 or a flex, uh, and Theo Riddick is kind of a middling what-the-heck flex play. So uh, just keep that in mind. You're not really starting any Tampa Bay Bucks outside of maybe Mike Evans, again, and Vincent Jackson, um, the two stud receivers. Uh, although Detroit is 12th against the pass, um, it's a little bit of a tough matchup, but you're not going to see a lot of Tampa's backs because the Lions, as I mentioned last week, are first against the run. So I don't think I don't think you start any Tampa running backs. It's a messy situation anyway with Doug Martin and Bobby Rainey and Charles Sims. It's a mess. So I think you're going to see a lot of Josh McCown. Uh, and a lot of his receivers, uh, Mike Evans and Vincent Jackson. Again, no surprise here. The numbers heavily favor Houston over Jacksonville. Um, I think it's going to be a good week for, again, for Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think you can use him as a QB, too, uh, if, if you're really hurting. It should be a great week for Arian Foster. The Jaguars, of course, toward the bottom of the league in every statistical category. So start your Texans. Um, if only we could start J.J. Watt as a wide receiver or tight end. That would be just insane. J.J. Watt, he's been ridiculous this year. Why is that getting more talk for MVP? I don't know, but he should be. Should be. Um, numbers heavily favor Denver against Buffalo. Um, again, start your Broncos. You know, Start Peyton Manning. Start Demarius Thomas. Start Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, if Julius Thomas plays, obviously you're going to want to start him. There's... There's encouraging signs he's going to come back from the ankle injury this week, but we'll see. I got a backup plan in case uh, he doesn't play for my team. I got Jordan Reed from Washington developing a good report with Colt McCoy. So, um, so start start your Broncos this week. Even though the matchup is tough, even though the Bills defense is tough, they haven't played really a, a team with an offense a, a juggernaut of Denver. So, um, so start them. I really can't recommend starting you know any any Bills. Maybe out you know. Not even, not even Sammy Watkins because Denver is tenth against the pass. It's just, it's just too tough a matchup. Denver's D too strong. I can't really just recommend starting any Bills this week. Uh, Kansas City and Arizona. The numbers actually say it's a toss up, but I would probably pick Kansas City because again, in case we haven't noticed, dun 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 dun, dun breaking news: uh, the Arizona offense is imploding on itself. It has completely fallen apart over the last two weeks. Uh, with Drew Stanton at quarterback, we thought maybe he'd be okay, but not the case. It's not a good matchup really for either quarterback, so I can't really recommend uh, starting uh, Drew Stanton or Alex Smith. Um, maybe Smith is a desperate QB3 because Arizona is 27th against the pass, so it's it's kind of tough there. Um, but the run the running game is going to have, I think, good opportunities. Obviously, you're starting Jamal Charles, obviously. Um 
you know, you're, you know, he's gonna he's gonna get his. You know that. Even though he had the knee issue with the bruised knee, he's gonna I think power through it. Um, and then whoever starts for Arizona, monitor the status of Andre Ellington. It looks like he's got he's a little bit banged up, but um, if if he goes, I think he's a must play. The Chiefs are 30th against the run. If he doesn't. It's going to be tough because then you've got, you know, Taylor's out. You've got guys like Marion Grice and down the further roster. I wouldn't recommend any of those guys uh, as playable options. So um, the numbers heavily favor Seattle over Philadelphia, and I don't blame them there either. Uh, even though it's, it's a good matchup with two strong NFC teams. Um, again, this will probably be a tough week for the quarterbacks. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd probably prefer Russell Wilson to Mark Sanchez because – Again, the Seahawks are third against the pass. It's going to be a tough day for Sanchez and his receiving core. Um, but the, the Eagles are 26th against the pass, so this should be a good week uh, for Russell Wilson. Um, <clears throat> you're definitely using Marshawn Lynch regardless of matchup. The Eagles are 12th against the run, but you're using Marshawn Lynch. Uh, and even though the Seahawks rank fifth against the run, you can probably get away with using LaShawn McCoy as an RB2 because uh, the Eagles are sixth in rushing this season. So... I think you're going to see a lot of the running backs in that game, um, and maybe Russell Wilson makes a good player too. But you're not going to. But I think the quarterbacks and receivers get a little bit of a downgrade in that game. San Francisco heavily favored over Oakland, and no surprise considering again Oakland the fact they got beat 52 nothing last week by St. Louis. We can't ignore that. So um, start your Niners. Um, start Colin Kaepernick. I know he's been at times struggling this year, but he should bounce back in this matchup. If the Rams quarterback can look amazing against the Raiders, certainly Colin Kaepernick can. So start Kaepernick, start Frank Gore, uh, start your your good wide receivers like uh, Anquan Bolden. Um, maybe Michael Crabtree is a three. Um, maybe not Vernon Davis because he's struggled most of the year, but you know, maybe what the heck tight end two, three play if you're desperate. Um, so yeah, start your Niners this week for sure. Um, fun game is going to be New England, San Diego. That's going to be an entertaining one to watch. And the numbers are actually pretty even in this one, but they slightly favor the Chargers. Um, Phillip Rivers should have a big week this week. The Patriots are 23rd against the pass. So, uh, it should be a good week for Phillip Rivers is a low one, high two. Obviously you're starting Tom Brady. There's no discussion of that. They're in the Chargers, <coughs> excuse me. The Chargers are strong against the pass. They're ranked seventh, but you're not sitting Tom Brady at this point in the season. The running game though, <coughs> the running game might struggle for both sides. Both teams are pretty decent against the run. New England, you don't know what they're going to do at running back. It's kind of a mixed bag, so I would avoid that altogether. Maybe Shane Vereen is the safest play, but between Jonas Gray, LeGarrette Blunt, and Brandon Bolden, it's it's a mess. So I would say Vereen really is the only one you really trust as an RB2. Maybe Blunt as a three or a flex, maybe and Gray as a four. So, you know, what the heck. Um, but with San Diego, if you start anybody, it's Ryan Matthews if he's healthy. Um, but... Temporary expectation, maybe more of an RB3 because the matchup is so tough. And then finally on Monday night, you've got Atlanta and Green Bay. You're probably going to want to start your skill players in this game because the defenses really on both sides are pretty much atrocious, except for Green Bay's pass defense. Um, you're starting Aaron Rodgers and his receivers because the Falcons are 32nd against the pass. It's going to be feast day for Aaron Rodgers and, and company because they're going to feast on that. So start Aaron Rodgers, start Jordy Nelson, start Randall Cobb. Maybe even start Devontae Adams as a, as a uh, wide receiver three or four. Um, you know, start start those guys. And start your running back. Start Eddie Lacy. Start even Steven Jackson because the running games, are these, these are terrible. Green Bay is 28th against the run and Atlanta is 20th. So it's going to be a big day for the running backs there in that matchup too. So start your Falcons and start your Packers for that Monday night game. So good matchups across the board. Some tough ones as well. Um, but let's look at the... Position by position real quick. Mm. Hopefully there won't be any wild disagreements this week, unlike last week with Matt Forte. <laughs> All right. Quarterbacks. Um, top five this week. Uh, Andrew Luck, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Uh, no, no qualms with any of those. These guys, of course, have been cornerstones. All season long. Um, I think probably the best of that bunch is going to be Rodgers just because of the fact that, again, the matchup, you know, 32nd against the pass. I mean, it's, it's a dream matchup. I'm surprised Rodgers isn't one. 
because when you, because luck going up against Cleveland, Cleveland as you as we know has a decent secondary. Cleveland is eighth against the pass, so that you know the fact that you got Joe Hayden, Buster Scrine, you know some really good guys in that secondary in Cleveland, so that worries me a little bit. But I still think Luck's going to get his points. Um, you know maybe I don't know I. Maybe I'd put Rodgers 1, and then I'd put Breeze 2, barely above Luck, just because of the matchup. So I'd probably go Rodgers, Breeze, Luck, but then I'd go. Then I'd keep Manning and Brady where they're at, because I, they're matchup-proof. I, I don't think, I'd not worry about the San Diego matchup for Brady. I'm not worried about Buffalo for Peyton playing, in, even though they're good pass D, Ds. They, get, they find a way to get their points. So, um... <clears throat> I would have them in the bottom of that group based on matchup, but I, I see I put the guys with the easier matchups ahead of those guys. So I think Rodgers and Breeze are safer plays. I would have them further ahead of, of Luck, Manning, and Brady, but there's, I think they're still going to get uh, their share of points. I think you guys can go ahead and start those guys. Um, six through ten, um, now that we pull the Thursday night guys out of the conversation, looks like Matthew Stafford, Andy Dalton, Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill, Colin Kaepernick. Um, as I mentioned, love Stafford this week. I think he's ranked right where he should be. I, I think, again, Tampa, terrible against the past 21st. It's in Detroit, playing at home. That's where Matthew Stafford seems to be the most comfortable. I love his matchup. Um, I, and then after that, Dalton's projected for 23 against Pittsburgh. I don't know how. He can get to that. I, I mean, I understand it's at home, and I understand you know you're you know you're playing in Cincinnati and you're better at home, but he's the, the Bengals are 24th in passing offense, and the Steelers are 16th against the pass. I, I don't know how I can have him that highly rated. I especially not above Russell Wilson. Especially, I I don't even know if I can put him above Tannehill. Really. Baltimore's 31st against the pass. I, I would knock Dalton down a few notches. I mean, he's been so hard to trust in these last few weeks of the season. So I would probably go Stafford. I'll, I'll, put, I'll, say, I'll say Stafford. I'll put Tannehill 7th because I really, you know, his, his match with Baltimore is great. He's playing at home. The Dolphins right now have the 6th spot in the AFC. They want to hold on to that. He's played well of late. He's going to exploit that Baltimore secondary, I think. He's got weapons there with Mike Wallace and Jarvis Landry coming along strong. Um, and his tight ends, whether it be Deion Sims or Charles Clay, he's got weapons there. So I'll say Stafford, Tannehill, Wilson, barely above Kaepernick. Not by much, but just because of the fact, you know, I think that Wilson's going to have his opportunities against Philly. Kaepernick's certainly going to have his opportunities against the Raiders. So that's really a coin flip, but I'll say Stafford, Tannehill, Wilson, Kaepernick, and then Dalton I have to put 10th because I just think Dalton is rated a little bit too high considering the matchup and the fact that he's just struggled uh, of late. So, But I love Stafford's matchup. I love Tannehill's matchup. I think those guys are definitely strong starts, and I love Colin Kaepernick's matchup. And so I think you can use Russell Wilson as a QB1, QB2, but I think those first three that I mentioned, Stafford, Tanny Hill, Kaepernick, get those three in your lineup. I think they're going to pay big dividends for you. I'm a little worried about, uh, as Colin Cowherd calls him, uh, the beige water pistol. Uh, next five, um, Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, Teddy Bridgewater, Mark Sanchez, Matt Ryan. Um, Eli Manning's matchup obviously is a dream matchup, and I think he's ranked right where he should be out of this group because, again, the Tennessee defense is a dumpster fire. It is basically terrible. The Titans are already out of playoff contention. They're a really, really bad football team. And <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's Jets level bad or Oakland level bad or Jacksonville level bad, but it's pretty close. Tennessee is pretty much right in that general discussion. So now the passing D is actually Tennessee's strongest suit. They're 18th against the pass, which is you know a little bit below mid tier, but. I think Eli's going to have his his chances in this game uh, to do, and obviously when you've got guys like an Odell Beckham that can make ridiculous catches, uh, like a Ruben Randall, like a Larry Donnell at tight end, um, you're going to get opportunities against Tennessee. So I love Eli Manning's matchup. I think certainly he is a serviceable uh, QB one, QB two for you this week. Um, 
I think Philip Rivers is in a good uh, spot. I think I have no disagreement with him uh, in that in that spot. Um, I think you can use him as a QB two against New England. Um, you know, so maybe not a must start, but again, but the benefit is at home. New England is twenty third against the pass. He's he's getting opportunities. He I mean, shoot, a couple weeks ago he made Baltimore again. He exploited Baltimore secondary amazingly well. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So he's got that going for him. He's got plenty of weapons there in San Diego uh, with Keenan Allen and Antonio Gates and and the like. So. Philip Rivers, I think, is in a good position there. I think I have no qualm over where he's ranked um, out of that group. So I think that's good. So, but the next three, Bridgewater, Sanchez, and Ryan. Um, I would say I'd probably put Sanchez – well, I'd probably knock Sanchez down a notch. I would probably put Matt Ryan ahead of Mark Sanchez. I think Bridgewater at, at 13 – you know, is is okay because again, it's the Jets, and they've really given up on the year. Even though their pass D is strong, um, you know, it's 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 going to be it is it is a tough matchup. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm really torn on this one. I'm really torn on rating these three between Bridgewater, Sanchez, and Ryan because I think Sanchez is going to struggle because again. Yes, it's at home, but that's Seattle secondary. That scares me. That it scares me to play Mark Sanchez because, as, as you know, as an owner who once had Sanchez, a good I use him in good matchups. But now, if, it, if this were me, if I still had Mark Sanchez, I'd be struggling with this decision. So, ah, uh, this is very tough. I, you know what? I would probably put Ryan ahead of both of them. I would put Matt Ryan ahead of both uh, Teddy Bridgewater. And Mark Sanchez. So I think it's just going to be a tough week uh, for both for both those quarterbacks. I think it's just going to be a, a big challenge because you're going against really good secondaries, and you're and even though you're playing at home, it's 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 just very very tough. So I would say out of that group of five, Eli and Rivers love their matchups. I think they're must starts. But then if you're looking more for like QB two, QB threes, I would go Ryan. Then Bridgewater and then Mark Sanchez. And I understand the Philly offense is strong, but they going up against a Seattle team that's really gotten hot of late. And that secondary is really scary. So, and plus, I bet Richard Sherman's going to be all over Jeremy Macklin. But on the flip side, that opens up opportunities for Jordan Matthews, who is one of Mark Sanchez's favorite targets. So, eh, it's a coin flip. I think between Sanchez and Bridgewater, kind of pick your poison. It's a coin flip. Both are free agents in my league. It's really kind of a nah, which way you want to go. But I think Eli and Rivers are safe QB1s. Ryan is certainly a QB2 with upside. And Bridgewater Sanchez, if you want to take the risk, it's it's risky. It's really risky, I think, on both of them. But I'd, like, I'd rate Bridgewater slightly ahead of Sanchez, but only based on the matchup alone. Uh, 16 through 20. Um, Cam Newton, Zach Mettenberger, Ben Roethlisberger, Alex Smith, Ryan Fitzpatrick. So we're really digging deep at this point. Uh, I think you got to start Cam Newton against the Saints. I think that's, to me, I, I'm surprised he's rated that low. I might even put Newton ahead of Bridgewater, uh, Sanchez, and Matt Ryan. I'd probably put him above those three. Uh, because, again, the matchup with New Orleans, even though you're playing, playing in New Orleans, the Saints' secondary is awful. It has been awful, and we've known that for the past few years. So I think Cam Newton's going to have numerous chances to hook up with his top weapons in Kelvin Benjamin, in Greg Olson. I think I think you've got to go with Cam Newton uh, in this matchup. So I think I would rate him above those, bottom, those three that I mentioned on 13, 14, 15. I'd put him probably at 13, and then I'd probably put Newton there and then go Ryan. Bridgewater, Sanchez, 14, 15, 16. So I think Newton's a little low on that list. I'd put him a little bit higher. I think Newton is a very safe play this week. Um, again, I mentioned Zach Mettenberger. The Giants' pass D is nothing really that special. I mean, it is. they are 19th in the league. So, you know, maybe maybe you get away with the Mettenberger as a what-the-heck QB 2 or 3, but I'm not, I'm not in love with the matchup. Um, now, Roethlisberger against Cincinnati – 
I'd say that's a pretty good one to maybe to use as a strong QB2. The Bengals are 14th against the pass. I'd probably put Roethlisberger ahead of Mettenberger just because of the fact that Tennessee's struggling. Um, now, would I put Alex Smith above Mettenberger? Yeah, I think I would too, actually. And shoot, I think Mettenberger would probably be on the bottom of that list because I because then you got Ryan Fitzpatrick. And Ryan Fitzpatrick is actually doing pretty well in Houston, and he's got a great matchup with Jacksonville this week. So actually... I would drop Mettenberger down all the way to the bottom of that list. I'd put, I'd, I'd, I'd move Newton up to 13th. So, 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 let's, so I'd have a Eli Rivers 11, 12. I'd have Newton at 13. Then Ryan Bridgewater Sanchez 14, 15, 16, and then Roethlisberger at 17, Smith at 18, Fitzpatrick at 19, and then Mettenberger at 20. Um, I, I think is how I would rate um, those. I, I think out of that bunch, you know, I think if you're looking for someone to, you know, for a QB two with a matchup that you can exploit, maybe you go with Alex Smith or Ryan Fitzpatrick because the, the, it's dream matchups. Even though they're on the road, both Arizona and Jacksonville struggling, struggle against the pass. So I think those are matchups that you can exploit. So I like either of those guys. Uh, as decent starting option, uh, options at QB for, for like a two quarterback league or a QB with upside if you're uh, if you're looking for some help uh, at quarterback. And then at this point we're really uh, we're really digging deep. Uh, at, if, once we get to these guys, uh, you're probably not starting any of these guys in the vast majority of your league. Um, but, but below uh, Fitzpatrick, you're looking at the next group. Is Colt McCoy, Sean Hill, Joe Flacco, Drew Stanton, Josh McCown. That's the next five. Um, out of that bunch, um, if if I'm starting anybody out of that group, it's probably I hate to say it, it's probably Colt McCoy because again the matchups the other four are just too tough. You're not starting Sean Hill against Washington. Washington's 15th against the pass, and even though you had a great week against Oakland, I mean, it, it's, you know, and he's finding some decent talent with the Rams players. It It's a whole different team and a whole different environment. They're not going to get the same opportunities they had against Oakland. I don't think you can trust Joe Flacco against the second-ranked Miami pass defense. I don't think you can do it. I don't have him as a recommended, recommended play because it's just way too tough a matchup. Obviously, at this point, you're not starting Drew Stanton because Arizona's offense has gone into the toilet, and you're not starting Josh McCown in Detroit. I mean, and I and you know, you might start his receivers because you know they might have a decent week. You know, maybe as a wide receiver two or three with Mike Evans and Vincent Jackson. But you, I don't think you can trust Josh McCown to put up decent fantasy numbers, especially starting fantasy numbers for your team. So, if you had to pick one out of that group it probably would be Colt McCoy. So really, I have no qualm with any of those rankings because I can't recommend any one of those guys below Colt McCoy to be put ahead of him. And then really digging deeper, the last five, Brian Hoyer, Kyle Orton, Blake Bortles, Geno Smith, Derek Carr. Um, you know, And again, I'd say I have to agree with you, the best of that bunch is Brian Hoyer because, again, the Colts are 25th against the pass, and you've got, wep and you've got a weapon in Josh Gordon, and you've got guys you can throw the football to. So... Again, if, if you're looking for a real desperate deep play, like a QB3 maybe even, um, or a real desperate play, then you're probably looking maybe at Brian Hoyer. But I can't recommend starting Kyle Orton against Denver. I can't – you're not starting Blake Bortles or Geno Smith at this point or Derek Carr of those bottom three. You're not starting those quarterbacks at all, period. So, But out of that group, if you're desperate, Brian Hoyer seems to be the best choice out of that group. Okay, moving on now to the running backs. A witch hunt. Oh, they're talking about the Washington quarterback situation. Cole McCoy is a decent play this week. What more can I say? I'd be surprised if Griffin is still in Washington next year, to tell you the truth. All right, top five. Uh, again, and this is taking out the guys that played on Thursday night from uh, – Dallas and Chicago. Um, Arian Foster, Marshawn Lynch, Eddie Lacy, Jamal Charles, and C.J. Anderson. A um, couple of these guys are banged up. Um, Arian Foster, again, the groin um, is a bit of an issue. 
Um, he's been limited in practice, so right now he is listed as questionable. But whoever plays for Houston at running back, whether it's Arian Foster, whether it's Alfred Blue, is a must start against the Jags, obviously, because of the great matchup. So Arian Foster, I don't mind him being the top back. Um, Marshawn Lynch, um, he was limited in practice uh, yesterday um, with a back issue. So he right now is listed as questionable for this week, so monitor that. But if, but if he plays, obviously you're playing against Philadelphia. So because of the uncertainty of those guys, I would probably then, you know, just based on matchup alone, you're probably, I agree, Foster 1, Lynch 2. But because he's healthy, I would probably put Eddie Lacy up at number 1 because, again, as I mentioned, the Packers run defense, or, or I'm sorry, the, the Falcons run defense is terrible. The Packers is bad too, but Falcons are 20th against the run. Opportunities abound for big points from Green Bay guys this week, especially Eddie Lacy. So actually, I would probably have him at one. I'd put him above Foster and Lynch just because of the fact of the uncertainty with their health this week. But if, if Foster and Lynch play, obviously they're must-start options. Um, but I would put Lacey right now at one because of the uncertainty of those guys. Um, Jamal Charles, as I mentioned, even though the matchup is tough with Arizona, uh, sixth-rate run defense, he finds a way to still get his. The knee has been the issue, but full practice this week, he's going to play. The Chiefs are hoping to give him even more touches in these last few weeks of the season, so I think you can safely roll with Jamal Charles. And then C.J. Anderson of Denver. Um, I'm going to scroll down here. There we go. Uh, C.J. Anderson, full practice this week. He was dealing with a bit of an ankle issue, but he's listed as probable, so he's going to play. Um, Buffalo is rated seventh against the run, but again, C.J. Anderson is, is the only back, Denver, healthy back, really at Denver. Well, healthy, quote unquote, but he's really the only back that can really play right now for Denver. So you probably can't afford to see C.J. Anderson. So I would say, as of right now, based on the health status and health situation that you want to monitor, I'd say right now Eddie Lacy is one. I'd say Foster's two, Lynch is three. If they play, I would say Charles is four. And I'd probably say Anderson is five. I would say that's that's a pretty good uh, rank. You know, no qualms any of those. If all those guys play, they need to be in your lineups. They're they're must start guys. I need I just need to see how what what Forte did this week because. Come on. There we go. Okay, he ended up with 15 points, but he he did a lot of his work through the pass, so he was he was involved in the passing game for a change. So um, so that's how he got his points. He got it through the air instead of on the ground. So hey, I guess however you can do it, but. So he, so he, so Forte bounced back. So he got to the where he was supposed to be rejected this week. So, but I knew it wasn't going to happen against Detroit, but against Dallas, yeah. Um. So then the next five, six through ten, um, I mentioned Mark Ingram. Um, he 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 has been limited in practice though this week uh, with ankle and toe issues. So he's listed as questionable right now. So I want to monitor that. But it looks like all signs are pointing to him playing. Uh, he plays. Must start against Carolina. The Panthers, 19th against the run. It's a good matchup for him. Uh, if Rashad Jennings plays against Tennessee, he's obviously a must start. Now, he did not practice yesterday, but he did practice today. He came back to practice today after the uh, dealing with the ankle issue. Um, so he is back in practice. So, you want, of course, you want to monitor that. But it looks like if he plays, it's a great matchup. Whoever starts running back for the Giants, whether it's Rashad Jennings or uh, Andre Williams, must start against Tennessee. I'd probably put Jennings uh, ahead of Mark Ingram. I probably would. So I'll put Jennings ahead of Ingram. Um, but Le'Veon Bell is ranked below both of them, and I don't think I agree with that. I, I'd say probably out of that bunch. I think Le'Veon Bell is as rock solid as they come. Again, Cincinnati, 25th against the run. It's a great week for Le'Veon Bell. I'd probably put him. And Justin Forsett is rated below him, and I'm surprised at that too um, because, again, Miami against the run is 21st. I'd probably put Le'Veon Bell and Justin Forsett above 
Mark Ingram and Rashad Jennings. Maybe well, maybe not Jennings. If Jennings plays, let's put let's put Jennings in the sandwich. Let's put let's put let's go Bell, Jennings for set, and then go Ingram and then Joyke Bell, which is the next name on this list, and he's going to get decent points against Tampa Bay. So so I'll say Le'Veon Bell. I have him at eleven. I think he's a must start. I'd say Rashad Jennings at twelve if he plays, must start. Justin Forsett, 13 if he plays, he's a, he's a good starting option. Then Mark Ingram at 14, if he plays, I think he's a good starting option. And then Joyk Bell, 15 at Tampa Bay, is, is a good RB2 um, with some upside. So I would say Bell is an RB1, must start. Jennings, RB1 or 2 if he plays. Forsett uh, is, an, is an RB2 if he plays. But he did not practice because of a knee. Although, okay, he was out of practice Thursday. He came back to practice today. So it looks like he's going to play. So I'd say he's an RB2 against Miami with, with upside. Then Ingram, if he plays, RB2 with upside. And then Joyke Bell, kind of in the same boat. Um, but Joyke Bell is hurt by the fact that Reggie Bush comes back. So that's why he's not as highly ranked as he might be. But I still think you got to play Joyke Bell if you're, again, hurting in our RB2. Because Sam Bay against the run. Is 18th mid pack, but I think he'll Detroit will still find a way to get uh, some points, especially using Joyke in the passing game. Uh, next five: uh, Jeremy Hill, Isaiah Crowell, Frank Gore, Trey Mason, Lashawn McCoy. Again, out of that group, I think again because of the matchup, I think you have to look at Frank Gore here. And I know Frank Gore has been inconsistent and hit or miss most of this season because again he's getting up there in age. He's been spelled by Carlos Hyde. But, again, it's Oakland. It's Oakland, for gosh sake. If the Rams can put up 52 on him, and if rookie Trey Mason can do what he did to them, there's got to be opportunities for Frank Gore in this game. There just has to be. So I think Frank Gore probably is the best of that bunch. I think you can start Frank Gore this week if you have a concern. Um, even CBS says, Frank Gore, worth a shot this week. Well, I, I I have to agree with that. I certainly think he's worth the shot too. So I think you can put Frank Gore in uh, as definitely a low one, high two with upside based on this great matchup. Um, and then, boy, then it gets really tough because then you're kind of really digging here at this point. Maybe you put Lashawn McCoy second out of that bunch just because of the fact that he's you know veteran, experienced. Yes, you're playing Seattle, and yes, Seattle is fifth against the run, but I don't think you can really afford to sit with Sean McCoy at this point. So I would probably put Gore first out of that bunch, then McCoy. Then I'd probably put Jeremy Hill of Cincinnati. Pittsburgh is 11th against the run. We're getting really into tough matchups with these guys at this point. Then I'd put Hill. Then I'd put Crowell of Cleveland, and then I'd put Trey Mason. Washington is ninth against the run. That's a bad matchup for Trey Mason. Um, coming off the big game against Oakland, that's really tough on the road. So um, so I would say probably Gordon McCoy, probably the safest bets of that bunch is, you know, cute as Rarby twos with upside. And then I would go Hill, Crowell, and Mason if you're searching for um, who to start at that position. That's where I'd go among those guys. Next five, Ryan Matthews, Boom Heron, Jonathan Stewart, Denard Robinson, Alfred Morris. As I mentioned, I love Boom Heron this week, and I love Jonathan Stewart. I think it, those guys, I think, are clearly they're in good matchups. I'd probably put both of them ahead of Ryan Matthews because, again, New England, 14th against the run. It's a tougher matchup. Yes, it's being played in San Diego, but... I'm just a little worried about that matchup. Um, it's going to be, I think, a very intense game with those two. So I love Dan Boom Heron. I think he's, you know, this matchup with Cleveland. Cleveland is 29th against the run. It screams no brainer. I think Dan Heron is a definite high upside RB2 this week with Jonathan Stewart right behind him. The Saints are 23rd against the run. I, again, so I put them both above. Um, Ryan Matthews. Um, I might even put both of them above above Trey Mason. Maybe barely above Crowell. Maybe not so much Jeremy Hill, but I'd probably put them above Trey Mason and Isaiah Crow Crowell this week. Um, 
because I, I just love their matchups and the fact they're getting they're now getting starting opportunities because no D'Angelo Williams. And even though Trent Richardson is still being worked in, in the Colts' backfield, he shouldn't, but even though he's still being worked in, Heron's going to get the majority of the touches. So I would go Heron, Stewart, Matthews. I'd probably put Morris ahead of Denard Robinson because Denard Robinson has struggled the past couple weeks. Um, Houston has a tough defense, very, very tough. Uh, the Rams are 16th against the run. Houston 17, so it's really a coin flip. But I would say Morris is going to get a lot more opportunities than Robinson is. So, so that's how I rate those five: Heron, Stewart, really a coin flip between those two as good starting guys. Matthews maybe a RB two, and then Morris and then Robinson. That's how I'd rate those guys. Uh, next five, and again, really at this point, we are really really digging deep into. Starting options are more like running back three or flex guys. LeGarrette Blunt, Lamar Miller, Bishop Sankey, Gio Bernard, Latavius Murray. Now, Latavius Murray, again, is an interesting name. We mentioned him, what he did to Kansas City last week. And the blooper I made about getting rocked off. I have to keep bringing that up, you know. Uh, but, uh, but... Um, this week, Murray, um, I don't know why CBS is letting me, here we go. Um, he did practice in full this week, uh, coming off a concussion. Uh, so he is listed as probable right now for the San Francisco game. Um, the Niners are eighth against the run. So that is a tough matchup for Latavius Murray. So that's why I worry about him a little bit. Probably, I would say, out of this group, um, if you had to pick one, probably the safest bet is probably, I hate to say it, but it is probably Garrett Blunt. And I would put Gio Bernard second because, again, yeah, the, the Pittsburgh matchup is tough, but him and Jeremy Hill forming that one-two combo in Cincinnati, uh, I think you're going to see a lot of the Cincinnati running backs. Again, you can't trust Andy Dalton. So I think you're going to see a lot of the backs in that game um, with, you know, with, with the fact that it's just a tough matchup. Um, so I would say LeGarrette Blunt would probably be one as a RB2-3 with upside. Then Bernard is a three or a flex. But I cannot recommend playing Lamar Miller, Bishop Sankey, or Latavius Murray based on these tough matchups. I can't recommend these guys as plays. Maybe you throw in Miller as a what-the-heck flex, but, I, but Sankey and Murray, no. Not with the tough matchups they're facing this week. Um, so, and then if we're really, 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 really digging deep into the running back pool at this point with these guys, Carlos Hyde, Matt Asiata, Fred Jackson, Andre Williams, Steven Jackson. Again, I mentioned that I like Steven Jackson, and I think you can he is usable against Green Bay because, again, the Packers are 28th against the run. So I think certainly Steven Jackson is, a, is an option you can use as an RB3 or a flex. Um but I can't recommend Hyde. I don't think he gets you know really a lot of work in Oakland. Maybe you know he's he's very touchdown dependent. Plus he's questionable with a shoulder issue anyway. So I can't recommend Carlos Hyde. I'm not going to recommend Matt Asiata, the Minnesota you know because again the Jets third against the run. Um, so just just too tough a matchup there. Um, you might see more Teddy Bridgewater in his receivers than you probably would want. But so I can't recommend Matt Asiata this week. Um, Fred Jackson against Denver, no. And Andre Williams, if he plays against Tennessee, maybe a flex. But so really the only guys I can recommend out of that bunch are as maybe flex options are Steven Jackson uh, and Andre Williams. But I like Jackson the most of that bunch. Um, again, after that, Trent Richardson, Marion Grice, Shane Vereen, Chris Johnson, Chris Ivory. The only concern with Vereen is he's dealing with an ankle issue right now himself. He's listed as questionable right now against San Diego. So if he doesn't go, then I don't think you can really trust really many New England running backs, maybe outside of LeGarrette Blunt as a flex. But I don't think you can really trust him. Now, I mentioned Chris Johnson. I think you can use Chris Johnson as maybe an RB3 or a flex because, uh, again, the matchup's good uh, with Minnesota in that 24th-ranked run defense. So out of that bunch, again, I, I like, I'd say I like Chris Johnson the most. Um, I would say probably then maybe Grice is a what the heck flex. I'd put him second. I'd put Richardson third. 
and then Vereen and Ivory kind of a toss up for that bottom spot. Um, but after that, I can't really recommend any guys below them. Um, at this point, at that point, you're really, really digging deep into the running back pool. Okay, moving on now to the wide receivers for this week. Um, and again, we're taking out the guys that already played in, thir in the Thursday night game between Dallas and Chicago. So your top five now are Calvin Johnson, Demarius Thomas, uh, Jordy Nelson, A.J. Green, Antonio Brown. Um, now, Demarius Thomas, um, from reports, he did not practice with an ankle issue. So right now he's listed as questionable, but so you want to monitor that this week. But in all likelihood... Um, if, if he plays, obviously you got to start him against Buffalo. AJ Green is dealing with a thigh issue, so he has been limited in practice this week. Right now, he is listed also uh, as questionable for the Pittsburgh game. Um, I'm not thrilled with AJ Green this week anyway, because again, the tough matchup with Andy Dalton struggling. So I'm not thrilled with that. I'd probably rate him the bottom of that group of receivers. I'd probably drop him further down the list even. Um, but. I think Calvin Johnson, yes, definitely at one. Um, if Demarius Thomas plays, I might even put Jordy Nelson ahead of Demarius because, again, the Green Bay receiver is going to go off. I'd, put, I'd say Calvin Johnson's one, Jordy Nelson is one B, and Randall Cobb is one C because the Packers receivers are going to go buku on that horrible Falcon secondary, not maybe even non-existent Falcon secondary. So I will say Calvin Johnson, one, Jordy Nelson, one B, Randall Cobb, one C, Demarius Thomas, two. Then I'll put Antonio Brown, three. Um, and then you probably put, then you, then maybe A.J. Green, probably the bottom of that group at four. And then Emmanuel Sanders at five. I think any of those guys are, you're probably going to start these guys, but again, I worry about the only one I really worry about in that bunch. If he, you know, if these guys all play, is AJ Green because of the fact that you know the tough matchup with Pittsburgh. So that just worries me a little bit. But you probably again, you probably can't afford to sit AJ Green. Just temporary expectations a little bit on AJ Green. So that's how I'd rate uh, that group of guys. Uh, the next five. And again, I think these guys are all safe starting options. Josh Gordon, yes, he's a little off with Brian Hoyer, but he says he's going to get better on that. I'm glad. I think, I think he's glad they stuck to Brian Hoyer because it's better for Josh Gordon. It's a good matchup with the cold secondary. Um, so I think Josh Gordon's a great play this week. Yes, you start him. Julio Jones, I mentioned, start your Falcons, start your Packers. Um, even though the Packers are 11th against the pass, you're not sitting Julio Jones. You're certainly not sitting Odell Beckham against Tennessee. Maybe I even put Odell Beckham um, ahead of Julio Jones just by one spot. I'd probably go Gordon, Beckham, then Julio, then DeAndre Hopkins of Houston against Jacksonville. Another great matchup. He went off last week. And then Kenny Stills, great matchup against a non-existent Carolina secondary. So all those guys are safe starting options for you. I don't have really any qualms with any of those guys. Uh, in terms of where they're at, I think, except may maybe I put Beckham one spot ahead of Julio Jones because the matchup is better. But, but yes, Gordon, Beckham, Julio, Hopkins, Stills, get those guys in your lineups. They're going to be great plays this week, I think, and we'll win some fantasy games this week. Uh, next five, Kelvin Benjamin, Anquan Bolden, Brandon Marshall, T.Y. Hilton. Um, obviously, Marshall's out of the picture, so because he's already played, but also dealing with the rib issue, so I'm under that. So Kelvin Benjamin, Anquan Bolden, T.Y. Hilton, Deshaun Jackson, and then Mohamed Sanu. Um, obviously, I agree with Sanu at the bottom of that list, because, again, I worry about the Cincinnati receivers. Um, I love Kelvin Benjamin's matchup, again, with the Saints this week. Um, so I, I think he's in a good spot there. I like Anquan Bolden there with the, with the Oakland matchup. Yes, I agree with that. I think Benjamin and Bolden are both safe starts this week. Out of the next three, between T.Y. Hilton, Deshaun Jackson, and Mohamed Sanu, um, the only 
Now the only now the concern with Deshaun Jackson, he has now missed three straight practices. He's dealing with a shin issue, so uh, you want to monitor that. If, if if he doesn't play, obviously that means an uptick for Pierre Garcon for Jordan Reed at tight end. Um, so you want to monitor that. Um, but if if he is a full go, if he does play, um, would I put him ahead of T.Y. Hilton? I might, because I worry about T.Y. Hilton a little bit just because of the fact that Joe Hayden is probably going to be all over T.Y. Hilton um, for, for that game. So I worry about that a little bit. So, But based on the fact that Jackson is missing practices, I'd have to probably put him lower on my list. So I'd probably say I, I agree with, with Benjamin and Bolden. I think they're must-starts. I still think you're going to start T.Y. Hilton, even though I'm worried about him a little bit on the matchup. I think you can't afford to sit T.Y. Hilton. I think you can still start him, just be a little bit worried about the matchup. But I wouldn't say that Deshaun Jackson or Mohamed Sanu are recommended plays. Maybe more as wide receiver threes because of their health issues and, again, the fact that they're very tough matchups. Um, and then see the next five are Torrey Smith, Mike Evans, Jordan Matthews, Golden Tate, Jarvis Landry. I would probably put um, I would put Mike Evans ahead of Deshaun Jackson and Mohamed Sanu because again, Josh McCown's got to throw, throw to somebody, and Mike Evans is his top option right now. So I would, even though the matchup is tough with Detroit, I think they'll find a way to get his. I put Jordan Matthews ahead of Deshaun Jackson and Mohamed Sanu because again, you're, yes, you're playing Seattle, but Jeremy Macklin is going to be on Richard Sherman. And that, is, and that is going to give Jordan Matthews more opportunities for Mark Sanchez to throw to. So I think that only helps Matthews. I would put Evans, Matthews, I'd put Golden Tate ahead of those two, and I'd probably put Jarvis Landry ahead of those two. So really, if you look at that group, just of that group of, of, of eight, of Hilton, Jackson, Sanu, Smith, Torrey Smith of Baltimore, Evans, Matthews, Tate, and Landry, I would say Hilton, Evans, Matthews, Tate, Landry. I think all those five guys right there are very safe starting options for you. Hilton, Evans, Matthews, Tate, Landry. The three I worry about are Jackson with his injury, Sanu with the matchup, and Torrey Smith with his matchup against that Miami secondary. So those three I worry about, but the other five of that group I think are really strong starting receivers as wide receiver two and threes, absolutely. Um, after Landry, you're then looking at guys like Roddy White, Brandon LaFell, Mike Wallace, Jeremy Macklin, and Julian Edelman. A couple of these guys are banged up, though, which again leaves their status in doubt. Roddy White has not practiced with an ankle issue, so he's listed as questionable this week for the Green Bay matchup. Brandon LaFell is, a, is battling a shoulder issue, so he's listed as questionable. Mike Wallace, a chest issue, he's listed as questionable. And then Julian Edelman, thigh issue, limited practice, he's listed as questionable. So really with these guys, there's a risk involved in starting these guys. Um, but if they all play, if they're all healthy, then I think you can safely start Roddy White against Green Bay. Again, I love the matchup. So I would say I, I, I agree with Roddy White. Mike Wallace, I think Mike Wallace actually put ahead of Roddy White because the matchup is so great. So I'd go Mike Wallace right below his buddy Jarvis Landry, maybe even right below his, yeah, right below Jarvis Landry. Mike Wallace, Roddy White. I would probably then put LaFell and Edelman kind of in a uh, toss-up because, again, that San Diego pass D is strong. But it's nothing going to be compared to what Jeremy Macklin's going to face because he's going to see a lot of Richard Sherman. So I would say if all five of those guys play, if they're all healthy and they all play, then it's Roddy White for me. Then it's Roddy White, Mike Wallace. Or no, I'm sorry. I put Wallace ahead of White. Mike Wallace, Roddy White, Brandon LaFell, Julian Edelman, and then Jeremy Macklin because I don't think I can recommend Macklin as a strong play this week because of the tough matchup. Um, after that, the next five, Kendall Wright, Greg Jennings, Marcus Colston, Dante Moncrief, Stedman Bailey. 
maybe you look at Dante Moncrief here because, again, as I mentioned, Joe Hayden's going to be on um, T.Y. Hilton in all likelihood. Reggie Wayne's going to get opportunities. So then Buster Scrine, who is not exactly a great corner, that might he might be on, put on Dante Moncrief, and that might give him opportunities to open up and, and be impressive. He's already leapfrog Akeem Nix. We know that. So now maybe he gets an opportunity or two to really show himself this week. So, again, if you're looking at this point for desperate wide receivers three and fours, I think maybe out of that bunch, Dante Moncrief is the best option. I would say probably Greg Jennings is second of that group. Um, Kendall Wright of Tennessee is dealing with a cracked bone in his hand, so now he's listed as questionable. So, again, that's a concern as well. But, again, I wouldn't recommend starting any Titans. So I would say out of this group, I would say Moncrief, Greg Jennings. I think either of those guys are may, are flirting with wide receiver three, wide receiver four status. But after that, I can't recommend Kendall Wright. Not sold on Marcus Colson, more of a wide receiver four. Same with Stedman Bailey because the Rams wide receiving core is mostly a mess. So can't recommend him. Next five, again, really at this point, we're really digging deep into the wide receiver pool, looking for more like wide receiver four or flex guys. Nate Washington, Andre Hawkins, Keenan Allen, Charles Johnson, Marcus Marquise Lee. Again, I would say probably if you're really hurting the best out of that bunch is probably Charles Johnson. I think you're going to see a lot, again, of Minnesota's receivers play well because of the fact that the, the running matchup is strong. Um, I think Bridgewater's going to have a the chance to throw in this game, so I'd say probably Charles Johnson is the best out of that bunch. Maybe a what the heck wide receiver four flex on Nate Washington if you're really hurting or desperate. Um, but other than that, actually maybe Keenan Allen ahead of him. I would say probably Charles Johnson, Keenan Allen are wide receiver three or flexes. So then Washington more of a four. Andrew Hawkins more of a wide receiver four. Marquise Lee, more of a four, not even recommended at all. So that's that's the way I'd rate uh, that group of five. But then after that, outside of those guys, I can't really recommend anybody else as playable options this week. All right, real quick to finish up here, moving along to the uh, tight ends, kickers, and DSTs for the week. Um, at tight end... Um, top five, no shockers among this group, Jimmy Graham, Rob Gronkowski, Antonio, Antonio Gates, Delaney Walker, Dwayne Allen. Now, so it looks like Allen is listed as coming back uh, full practice this week off the ankle, so he's listed as probable, so it looks like he's going to play. Him and Kobe Fleener are actually both rated pretty high, um, so... If you're, again, if you're looking, you know, at for a tight end, you know, I think if you have either of those guys, I think you can play them against Cleveland. Allen, more of a tight end, you know, one or two. Fleener, more of a two. Um, you know, again, there's going to be opportunities for them, I think, to make catches and plays in this game. So I like them both. I have no qualms against Jimmy Graham, Rob Gronkowski, Antonio Gates. You're starting them regardless. Uh, but And, again, Delaney Walker, though, concerns me a little bit because, again, the Giants, well, yeah, it's not it's it's not a great matchup, but it's also a little tough. They're 19th against the pass, but again, Tennessee's just struggling so much. It's going to be tough. Maybe more again of a low one, high two, but I have no qualms with any of those rankings. I think all those guys are at least serviceable. Certainly Graham, Gronk, and Gates are must-starts. Walker, Allen, Fleener, more of a low one, high two situation. Um... Next in that grouping, you've got Kyle Rudolph, Greg Olson, Larry Donnell, Timothy Wright, and Jordan Reed. Um, now, Rudolph should play this week against the Jets. He's had full practice this week. He's dealing with an abdomen and a groin issue, but he's, he's going to play. The only concern with Olson is he's been limited with a knee issue, so right now he is listed as, as questionable. Um, so if he doesn't, so I want to monitor that. If he plays, obviously, I think he's a must-start against New Orleans, but... If he doesn't go, they have to find another option there. Um, so I would say out of this bunch, I think Larry Donnell is probably the safest bunch of this of this group. I'd probably put Larry Donnell one, 
I think he is a solid start. Jordan Reed, I think, is a solid start if you're going to miss a tight end this week due to an injury. I think he's a good play. I've got him, as again, I mentioned, as a plan B if Julius Thomas doesn't go. Uh, I would say Rudolph at three. Olsen, four. He'd be higher if he plays. And then Timothy Wright. Timothy Wright's just way too inconsistent for my liking in New England because um, Gronk is the main tight end there. So he's just way too inconsistent. Not sold on him. Next five, Travis Kelsey, Heath Miller, Richard Rodgers, Jermaine Gresham, Anthony Masano. Really digging deep at this point. Probably the only one you can really look at as a recommended play out of that bunch is Travis Kelsey because, again, the Arizona secondary is horrible, and he's probably going to at least get a look in the red zone. So I'd say Travis Kelsey, the only one out of that group worth starting. Um, can't recommend any other guys because, again, they're just way too inconsistent. Um... Moving on now to the kicker. Oh, I clicked on something. There we go. Kickers. Um, looking at their matchups this week. Oh, bright guy moves. We got breaking news here. Hang on. Oh, nothing important. Okay, so kickers. Um, kickers that I like this week. Um, Vinatieri is projected for 12 against Cleveland. That's pretty much a no-brainer. He's usually a must-start every single week anyway. Phil Dawson of San Francisco against Oakland. Yes, dream matchup there. Uh, Connor Barth of Denver going up against Buffalo, I think, is is a good matchup as well. Um, probably want to use your kickers in the Seattle-Philly game. That's going to be a fun game. So Hauschka, Cody Parkey, I think you can use either of those guys. Um Matt Prater of Detroit against Tampa Bay. Yes. Use your kickers in the Green Bay Atlanta game. Mason Crosby. Um, and Matt Bryant. Um, use your kickers in the New England San Diego game. Stephen Gaskowski and Nick Novak. Uh, Blair Walsh of Minnesota against the Jets, I think, is very serviceable as well. Randy Bullock of Houston against Jacksonville. If you're looking for a streaming kicker, certainly is a great option as well. Um, Josh Brown of the Giants against Tennessee, I think certainly is a serviceable option. Um, but other than that, I can't really recommend any other guys um, outside of that group. And then finally, uh, DSTs this week. Um, top DST is the Rams against Washington. That's certainly understandable because you're going up against Colt McCoy and you're coming off the big week. Um, so they're projected for 16 and a half. Obviously, the 49ers D against Oakland is a no-brainer. Lions against Tampa Bay is a no-brainer. Vikings against the Jets, I got them off the wire. Great start this week. They're a no-brainer. Texans against Jacksonville, no-brainer. Uh, Broncos against Buffalo, um, I think that's a pretty good one as well. I think they're going to find a way to shut Buffalo down. Um, uh, let's see. After that, um, Dolphins against Baltimore, I think, certainly is maybe a sneaky play. Chiefs against Arizona is certainly a sneaky play, considering how bad Arizona's been of late. Um, let's see. Uh, Giants against Tennessee could be a sneaky play as well. Um, but other than that, I don't think I can recommend anybody else. Nope, I can't. All right. And with that, that's it. <laughs> that is it for week 14 of the FFSR preview show. 
Uh, go out there and get a win this week. Good luck to you this week. Uh, again, if you guys have any comments, questions, anything at all, feel free to hit me up in the comment box below this video, uh, or you could do it on the channel. I'll be checking my Gmail um, leading up again up to uh, kickoff Sunday, so uh, feel free to do that as always. God bless you guys. Uh, have a great week, and we will tune in next week when most of us start playoffs. Playoffs. Yes, playoffs. And hopefully I will be there too uh, for the Week 15 Preview Edition of For Your Team, Your Game, Your League, Your Home, the FFSR. Thanks, guys.